Voice of the Sea, learning from experts across the ocean. Welcome to Voice of the Sea. This time on Voice of the Sea, we're at the Pacific Aquaculture and Coastal Resources Center at UH Hilo. We meet up with lead researcher Maria Haas. So this is the Pacific Aquaculture and Resources Center, and it used to be the wastewater treatment plant for Hilo. Oh my goodness. And then it was decommissioned for quite a few years, and eventually the county and state gave it over to the university to run as an aquaculture center. And then these oysters, once they grow up, they would be suitable for eating, but mm -hmm. these you said you're going to send on to Washington. These will go to the Washi to Washington farmers or the fish ponds. Oh, and wow. the reason we're sending them to some Washington farmers is that they've approached us to do research for them because their hatcheries are being severely affected by ocean acidification. Because as the water becomes more acid, the little larvae can't actually form their shells. It's essentially dissolving the larvae, uh -huh. just like it dissolves coral. So, you know, sure. it's one of the bad impacts of ocean acidification. So, Maria, we're here with all the algae, which is the food for your oysters. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going on here? Well, this is our little algae culture lab. Uh -huh. So this is where we start the cultures of microalgae before we take them outside for the outside culture bag system that you'll see in a little bit. And this whole, this whole enterprise here is actually run and operated by our students, our student trainees. So, oh, wow. yeah, it's great. And students learn it really quickly. And this is a very, cultures, uh, algae culture is a really important skill to learn if you want to work in aquaculture or marine science. And these days, if you want to work in bioenergy, because as you know, they're making biofuels out of algae. So having a basic understanding of how to select strains of algae, how to grow the algae, and how to process it's really important. And uh -huh. right now, if you're an algae culture technician, that's actually a very hot job. And you, wow. can, you can get hired forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 straight out of an undergraduate program. To grow algae. To grow algae for research purposes, or to do it in an aquaculture facility, because this is the basis of everything we do. Why is that? Well, because almost all our animals depend on algae as a food. And even fish that eat things like rotifers and copepods, well, the rotifers and copepods have to have algae as their food. And rotifers and copepods are microscopic planktonic organisms. They're microscopic planktonic organisms that we grow and then we feed to fish, larval fish, and other aquaculture organisms. So it's like raising cattle. You know, you're really growing the grass to feed the cattle. And in aquaculture, you're really growing the algae to feed the oysters and the fish. And, and this is the algae that we're talking about right here. Right, we grow three different species of algae here. And for research purposes, we have other professors that grow other species of algae. But the culture techniques are very similar, and if you can develop a good hand with that, that's when you can get actually get some pretty good jobs. Wow. So it's not algae, like, sometimes when you think of algae in your mind, you might mm -hmm. see um, large algae that looks like a regular land plant. But these are microscopic, I'm guessing. Right. And that's why we call it microalgae as opposed to the macroalgae or the lemu. Right. So these are all one cell, or maybe they might be a couple cells hooked together, but they're basically microscopic, whereas the lemu or the macroalgae are large tissues made up of single cells. And so can I tell by looking at the color, um, the type of algae or the concentration, does this one have more in it than the lighter colored one? Right, so different species are different colors, but you can also tell the density of the cells by the color. So this would have fewer cells than this one, which is denser. And so when we start off, they're going to be not very dense, and we, the, the whole idea is to make it very dense so we have more cells like in this culture to feed our animals. Very cool. And then these are different kinds back here, these other colors. Right. These are all different types of algae. So we have green, we have green-brown, we have red. So th that's one of the things you learn is how to identify them and what each type is good for and what the different properties are. And do they have different nutritional value, the different colors, the different... Yes, yes. So, so almost all species have to have two or three different types of algae to eat because they have to have a mixed diet just like we do because each species provides a different type of nutrient. So that's why we have to grow a lot of different species. We can't just grow one. And in fact, this right down here where you see the test tubes, these are how we start them off. And this is all sterile. So if you're, if you're growing this, learning to grow this, what you have to do is you actually have to learn sterile techniques just like as if you were a nurse or a surgeon because everything has to be sterile because if you contaminate with bacteria or fungus, those will take over and you won't have a pure culture of algae anymore. So that's why you have to learn the skill, but that's also why you're, you're a very valuable person if you know the skill. <laughs> the University of Hawaii Sea Grant College Program. Helping coastal communities of Hawaii and the Pacific. 
through research, education, and outreach. Serving the community, from elementary to graduate students. Hawaii Sea Grant. The Curriculum Research and Development Group in the College of Education at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. CRDG's training routes go back over 40 years. Through professional development programs, curriculum workshops, research on teaching methodology, individualized school and district training, and so much more. The Curriculum Research and Development Group, improving schools, improving education. CRDG. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is the dynamic curriculum developed by the University of Hawaii's Curriculum Research and Development Group. The award-winning Fluid Earth and Living Ocean textbooks are now interactive and online. New activities, updated content, and a teacher community. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is now freely available. Find out more at exploringourfluidearth.org. NOAA Pacific Services Center, linking people to information and technology. The Pacific Services Center wants you to be prepared for any weather emergency and know your tsunami risk. NOAA Pacific Services Center, enriching life through science, service, and stewardship.